Hi everybody, I am going to do a tour of the new lab. I'm calling it Factory 400, and the reason I've, I've been calling it that is because it's 400 square feet, and I fully intend to make this little tiny space an actual factory. Not just a workbench or a lab or a place to put my computer, but actually for, to go from ideas um, all the way to a delivered project, um, a product, um, that includes CNC parts and uh, electronics assembly, software development, um, even the, the business component um, of everything, uh, shipping, receiving, packing, uh, storage, um, everything is going to happen in this microscopic little 400 square feet. So. This was previously my garage. I did a whole bunch of construction. Um, I added uh, walls and, and uh, insulation and lights and all those kinds of things. And um, you know, this is just the beginning of it right now. Uh, it is a bit of a wreck. You'll see this in just a second. It's like uh, essentially the construction just finished. I wiped the dust off of everything and shoved everything into the room. So it's clearly a mess. Um, and, and over the next few months, um, um, I, I'm still delivering things, by the way. Um, I have to run the business. I can't just shut this down and, and get it working. So I'm incrementally organizing things, cleaning things up, labeling things, kind of making them bigger and better. But um, I expect that this space is going to be the most productive 400 square feet in the entire world at some point. And um, I intend to do everything in here. Um, and so I don't have the cost of a building. This is the garage at my house. Uh, very, very exciting. And uh, let's not uh, waste too much time on my ugly face. Let's go take a look at the place as it is. All right, so as we walk in the door, th this is pretty much what we see. There's a giant pick and place machine in the middle of the room and uh, kind of dominates the whole thing. And there's a whole bunch of uh, shelving units. Uh, these shelves that are on, on uh, casters end up being kind of carts. And as I change my mind and move things around and need more space, I can quickly just grab it and wheel it around to wherever it needs to be. This guy right here is actually um, kind of from the restaurant industry, it's a bunch of trays. And I use this to to put a whole, whole bunch of um, um, individual projects. I can take these trays out individually and go stick them on the bench and, and work on them. Um, over here in the corner is, um, this is uh, the laser machine. This does uh, cutting and, and engraving. Essentially, this thing is just sitting on uh, these these uh, temporary folding tables that you you know might use for a picnic or whatever. So this part of the uh, the, the situation is, is is pretty crusty. There's no no doubt about it. Um, and one of the things that makes a pick and place machine uh, big, especially one like this, is that it has to be accessed from all four sides. So the machine itself is about uh, four feet by four feet. Um, but you have to be able to get to um, all four of these sides. It, it, it really takes up an enormous amount of space. This is just a folding table that I, I just needed to make a couple of circuit boards, so I kind of temporarily put this together. Um, this is the, um, the stencil printer, the oven, and this is the wire processing machine. Um, all of these things I, ha I have slated to be um, I have a kind of a custom workbench that I'm building for all of these things made out of uh, aluminum tubing and uh, that that it's going to save a whole bunch of space and you know come around this direction here what we see is the uh, the, the design workstation uh, down here and this is where I do uh, most of the design work uh, SolidWorks, CNC programming and circuit board design and you know all those kinds of things and right behind that is the is the workbench and this thing is uh, clearly in need of some work it's kind of just a heavy-duty workbench with another heavy-duty workbench sitting on top of it uh, to provide some spaces so, um, you know I've got a whole bunch of little uh, this is a bunch of metal drawers that hold um, you know all of the little lab supplies and and all that kind of stuff um, presses to put in PIM nuts um, you know all of my test uh, test leads and all those kinds of things so if we look at this from from nice and far away it, it really looks like a mess but fortunately I've got all the bits pieces and tools to uh, to go from soup to nuts uh, right here in this in this room which is which is really nice I can kind of conceptualize something and have it built really really quickly a really important piece of the room is this super ugly box which is an air conditioner and it ventilates up at the top um, 
Uh, that is like an attic access that I cut some some tubes into, but um, that is the uh, at the moment the the only way that this room stays uh, cool enough to function in. Because even on cold days, if I have all of the machinery turned on all at once, it gets hot in here, and, and this is needed even on a on a cold day. If it's 50 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Um, I still have to run the air conditioning, um, assuming everything else is running. One of the things I wanted to do in, in this environment is lighting. Um, you can see I've got, um, was it 12, 12 of these recessed lights, which provides a pretty decent base. And, uh, and this is a garage, a still functioning garage door that's just been sheetrocked around. And I put some, um, uh, high-powered LED bulbs in there for some additional lighting and I have some other lights some task lights that I plan on putting inside the pick-and-place machine and some other things to kind of help things out but I think one of the most unique things about uh, the way I did this when, when the room was empty uh, some of these people kind of noticed right away hey you didn't put any outlets in here and that is entirely true what I did was I put these uh, cable trays in now these are not done yet the whole I'm gonna have a whole grid done in here. This is just what I've installed so far uh, because I needed to get get started. But if we look at this closely, it holds um, compressed air, vacuum, data, uh, and power um, in this in this tray. And the cables can exit at any point, be rerouted at any point. And it's really convenient because at some point I'm going to want to rearrange the whole thing. Like maybe I get a different pick and place machine, I get a new workbench, I decide that I want this workbench in a different area and all of the cables and hoses and all that kind of stuff that has to support various pieces of equipment um, I just have to reroute them in the tray and I you know I don't have to cut any um, any holes or outlets or whatever in the walls so thanks for tuning in and looking at the you know the, the very beginnings of of the new lab this is um, a bit of an experiment to see just how far I can go with 400 square feet of space which um, on, on the best day, it's going to be crowded. But uh, I, I, at this point, I'm, I'm able to actually get a whole bunch of stuff done in here and I've just barely gotten started. So really hoping to um, uh, continue on with the organization and, and um, kind of packing things in. We actually have room right there to put a, a small five axis uh, mill that Haas just came out with a, a five axis mill called the CM1 and it, it, I'm pretty excited because most of the uh, parts that we make are small enough to be made on that machine. So within 400 square feet, I can do the mechanical design, the, um, the electronics design, the software, um, all of the electronic assembly, um, and even add the CNC uh, machining part of the, the process and the, the laser engraving and, and all of that kind of stuff, bring all that in house. You know, so much of the, the junk that you see in here is gonna be purged and, and go away and it's really gonna be just business only within the 400 square feet that I've got. And um, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be able to make an entire factory in 400 square feet um, and probably the most productive 400 square feet that anyone has ever seen. That is the goal. Thanks for tuning in. I hope that I uh, hope that you like it. Let me know in the comments if you want to see um, any of the specific projects or learn more about stuff. I, I am kind of hoping to do some videos, but they do take a lot of time, so I'm only going to do them if, if I get uh, enough pressure from uh, from some of the viewers to uh, to do more videos. There's a whole lot that I can possibly do on running a small business. Um, uh, pick and place machines, wire processing, CNC machining, design, design for manufacturing, uh, test and measurement, all of those kinds of things. I mean, there's just a million topics that, that I've tackled over the past few years. Uh, not necessarily uh, tutorials, but just kind of an introduction to some of the concepts. Things that you will have to learn if you're actually hoping to go from um, a hobbyist or a maker and you want to actually make a business out of it and that's really what I did I was a hobbyist for my whole life and I made things my whole life and and learned a lot of the different skills but never turned that into a business it was about 10 years ago that I was like you know what I want to do this professionally and um, and I, I've gone through eh. <laughs> I'll tell you that that's that's a long story maybe one whole video can be how in the world did I arrive here it'll be a fun one so I'll save that for a different day. Anyway, hope you liked the video.